What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. This is part two of this 20 hour boat build. Now, I don't even know if I'm going to have 20 hours to put into it because that's five hours a day. My time I get home, get working on it. That means I got to work till one o'clock every night. And I don't know if I can do that, but uh, I'm going to at least put 15, maybe 20. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Tomorrow night, I actually got to coach basketball. So that's going to take two hours of my time. It's going to cut me short. And today's Tuesday and it's about eight o'clock. Video I dropped today, I literally finished last night. I had a little bit of footage from Sunday and then last night. Pretty much all the footage was from yesterday. So now tonight, I still got a lot of stuff to do. I came home with some goodies. I did go to the shop. I stayed late and built a bunch of stuff. I got all my hatch frames made. I got my live well cut out and bent up. I got to weld that together. I'm going to do that in just a second. But I'm ready to get this stuff rolling. Tonight, I have to get the live well finished and installed. I also need to get the deck, the front deck finished. That way, I can take measurements from my floor and my side panel, gunnel caps. I've got to get that tonight. And then I'm going to try to frame out the back deck. And I'm probably even going to go ahead and cut the back bench hatches out so I can dig all that foam out of there and get that stuff out of here too. I got a lot to do. I'm not going to hold you guys up here talking my head off because I just don't have time for it. Let's get right into it, guys. Let's get back to work. All right. So let me show you the stuff I got. I bent this live well up today. This live well is 30 inches by 14 and a quarter, and it's like 11 inches deep. Now, as you see on the top of this, there's different size lips on all these lips. There's a whole reason for that. I'll explain that in just a minute. What I've got to do though is I've got to get this thing cut. I'm going to cut here and here and I'm going to weld this thing up solid. This is just pieced together. I bent all these up at the shop. I just did not have time to weld them. I threw a little cross panel in the middle of that live well. But what I'm going to do is after I weld that up, I'm going to put the hole in the center and recess it. And then I'm going to run the hole with the drain through the bottom of this boat. I'm going to get this live well set in here exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to run some verticals from this floor rib up to the bottom of the deck and that floor rib up to the bottom of the deck. I'm gonna attach the live well to it, get that thing finished completely. Because tonight I have to take good measurements because tomorrow I have to build three parts that have to come home with me. I need this floor pan, that will be my next step. And I cannot get an exact measurement on that until after I finish up this live well and this front deck. After I get the floor measurements figured out, then I'm gonna be able to tell my top gunnel pieces right here. These are gonna be tapered. I'm gonna have a gunnel piece that's gonna go across here and on this side over here. Those will be made out of 125 aluminum and I cannot do those at home because uh, they're gonna be tapered for one and I gotta bend them in the press break. And they've gotta be perfect because this floor pan is gonna be kicked less than a 90 on these sides here. But I'm not building these pieces straight up. I'm coming way over here. They're gonna be smaller. They're gonna stick on the sides. This boat already is small. We cannot afford to lose all of that space up against these side ribs right here. So I'm gonna get that live will finish up right now and try to get that thing set in there. I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse. I got a lot to do. Let's get back to work. So you can see what we got. I welded this thing up solid. It looks good. It's about 9.30 on Tuesday. Got this thing finished up. I'm getting ready to install this live well. Now I did make a mistake. You see how this one's bent up? Well, I put this one in the wrong side. I had this piece on that side originally, and this piece was cut out for the wrong lip. This one's two and a half. That one's only one inch. So I just had to go ahead and cut it off across here and then move it where it needed to be to fit it in here. But now that that's done, it might make a little more sense. This is our hatch for the live well. Fits up here perfectly. So the whole reason for this being offset is so I can fit the pumps in there, obviously. 
Okay, this thing's rattling like crazy. Let's take this off here. But now what I gotta do is I'm gonna put this thing up underneath this front deck. This piece right here is gonna stick up underneath that side over there. So it's gonna be offset. It's gonna have more weight on that side of the boat, but he's gonna be sitting on this side of the boat because most people that are right-handed drive with their left hand with a tiller arm. So it's gonna work out evenly. Plus we're gonna put the gas tank on this side back here. So the weight distribution should be okay. I'm hoping that it'll work. It's my only option. I had to give him a big enough live well because he wants to fish all the local tournaments and I'm not gonna put a subpar live well in here that's not gonna keep his fish alive because it's just pointless. So I'm gonna get this thing staged up where I want it to be. I'm gonna drill the hole and recess this punch through the bottom of this live well. And then I'm gonna install the drain plug through here and through the bottom of this hole. Let's get back to work. All right, so you see what we got now. This live well is offset to this side. Look down here. You see this gap right here? That's because this rib is not square and parallel on either side with this front deck. Now we're going off of this front deck and our measurement from this deck to the back deck on either side is actually very close to being the same. So these ribs were just kicked a little bit when they put them in here. It's not gonna matter at all. I moved it back because you see right here, I got to have one inch in here and on this side over here. And what that's going to allow me is to put a piece of one inch square tube in from here down to this rib on either side. I'll probably stick one in the middle. Then I'm going to come back. I'm probably going to put another piece in here too from the bottom of this deck down to the floor. I'm going to attach the live well to that rib. That way it is sitting in there permanently. And it's welded in place. No flexing, no moving. It's just going to be floating in there basically. So now what I've got to do is I've got to figure out where I'm going to drill this hole in here. So you see how this boat works? It's got the ribs at the bottom, just like all of them. We got to hit this live well drain in the center, right in one of these pieces in here or here. So I'm thinking for this center right here, it's probably going to be right in the center of this rib right here. All right, so let's pull this hatch out. Now you can see the lip runs along here for my live well on all four sides. I'm gonna cut this one back a little bit because I couldn't squeeze it as tight over as I wanted to, but it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna run a cut well across here, take about a half an inch off of this. But what I'm gonna do when I drop this live well hatch in, I'm gonna run a bead of silicone or 5200 around here, all the way around. And then when I drop this thing in, this lid for the hatch will sit flush in here and it will create a barrier to where this is all one piece. So it's very important. You don't want that water to end up splashing back into your boat. This will keep the water that's supposed to be in there, in there. I'm gonna mark this hole in the center where this needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and drill my hole in the bottom of this live well. I'm gonna cut a piece of this pipe. I got this pipe right up here. I'm gonna use that as my drain to go all the way through. You'll be able to put a regular drain plug like you put in the back of your transom of your boat right into the bottom of this live well and pull it to drain it out. Let's get back to work.
right guys, so as you just saw in the last couple of clips, I got this live well installed. I welded this pipe for the drain in the top of the live well, and I welded it from the back side of the live well, and then I dropped it to the bottom of the hole and I welded it from up underneath the hole. It's welded solid. Those welds I put in there look good. I got to get these floor measurements figured out now. And what I have here is basically 41 inches on the floor from this brace back. Same thing on the other side. They're dead ass even at 41 inches. So that rib in there, that thing was put in there by somebody standing on one shoe or something because that is way the hell off. But I'm going to measure this floor out. I'm going to measure out for these side pieces in here. And it's damn near the same exact measurement on the top right here. It's like 41 and an eighth on both sides. So it should be pretty easy. Tomorrow night, I'm hopefully going to install the floor, the side panels, and I'm going to install these hatches back here and figure out this back deck because I got to wrap all this up tomorrow night because I only have one more day after that to finish this up. So tomorrow night's going to be very important to this build and it's probably going to wrap up this video. I got to get some sleep, guys. Tomorrow I'm going to bring all these pieces home and I'm going to get right back at it, but it's getting late. It's after midnight now and I'm tired, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, it's Wednesday night. Just got home from basketball practice. I made some goodies today and brought them home with me. I got the floor, we got our top rib channel piece over here, and this is gonna be our side panel right here. I still gotta make a piece for this, but I got another one for this side, it's right here. Let's sit up here just like that. This one's a little bit looser. That one will fit in there pretty tight, so I left it in there just to see what it would stage up like. Um, you see the front deck, it's pretty simple. I mean, you got one sheet here, and then you got one little piece there and one piece there. And then once the lids are in these hatches, the front deck's done. I mean, it's not like you got a whole bunch of sheet in here. You don't really need a bunch of metal in your boat. Mainly it's gonna be in your floor. It's gonna be your biggest piece. It's gonna be sick though. You can get a feel for the whole layout, what this thing's gonna be. What I'm gonna focus on now is getting this floor finished up and these side ribs put up here and getting all this stuff ready. Um, I'm kind of tired and it's getting kind of late already. It's about nine o'clock almost. But obviously we got a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Let's get back to work. So I got these two side panels installed permanently. I wanted to do that before I put this floor in here. That way I could shift it from port to starboard to figure out the correct angle I'm gonna need to go from here to here for my side panels. But these gunnels are installed. The way I did this is very simple. I shot some rivets up in the top here. You can see I countersunk those rivets, so they're basically invisible. I put a couple more in the center here and here, and then I've got these over here. Now these ones that are in the middle, these are attached to this piece of angle that I just welded up underneath it here. Now that's plenty strong enough for this. Uh, I did the same exact thing on the other side. I mean, this is more than enough. You can walk on this thing if you need to. And once this whole panel is in there, that panel is gonna be installed with rivets all the way across on top and bottom. And that's gonna make that thing way stronger. It's gonna finish this thing out. So now I need to install this floor in here permanently. And before I do that, I wanna put some foam up underneath here. That's all the foam I have left over there and it's all one inch. This is gonna be a big gap underneath here. It's gonna be like, you know, three inches probably of the rib height to the floor. And I don't wanna burn up all that foam and it's probably not enough to do it. So fortunately, what I'm gonna have to do next is I'm going to cut out, these two hatches are gonna drop on the port and starboard side of this back bench seat. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out and try to cut that foam out of there. And I might be lucky and be able to use some of those foams and strips to fill up this floor right here. Let's get back to work. So as you just saw in the last video clip, I cut out both of these top pieces here for these hatches and this hatch to drop into. Now I left a little bit of room in here. See the plan there? 
I cut that hole about 3 sixteenths of an inch big. That way it'll allow me a little bit of play and make sure that things are gonna fit in there. Now this hatch is specifically made for this back bench seat. You see how it's flush here and on this back side. I got a little bit of play this way. I wanna leave enough room for his seat pedestal base to sit in here. This seat pedestal base that was marked out and in here, it's off, it's not centered. The center line is here and this thing is probably sitting this way about a half inch. So I'm gonna move this back there. I'm gonna set this exactly in the center where it needs to be. I'm gonna drop both these hatches in here. Now, a lot of people complain about foam and I understand if you're dealing with that spray foam crap because that stuff sucks, man. It's terrible and it sticks down in there. It's impossible to get out, especially once it gets waterlogged and all of it eventually gets waterlogged. So don't ever, 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 ever use that damn spray foam. This is completely dry. It's been in here since 2006. I'm trying to cut this and do some pieces that are the same width as these floor ribs right here and reuse some of this. Hopefully the foam in the bottom isn't saturated because the ones in the bottom are probably like three inches thick and that's the ones I really want to use. This is one of the main reasons I love these well boats because their foam is in here. It's stupid easy to get out of here. I can remove all this foam in here in about 10 minutes and it's going to be stupid simple. I'm going to use this Sawzall right here. I've got an eight inch blade in here. It's a multi-purpose blade and I'm going to chop these into basically like a cube. I mean a lot of times I'll just chop it up like a tic-tac-toe board. I'm gonna remove this in pieces and big blocks and chunks. I'm gonna put you guys back on the time last. I'm gonna get this stuff out of here and we're gonna see if we can use any of this foam to put up underneath of this floor right here. All right guys, so the positive and the negative. The positive is there's no rib inside of this rear bench seat. That's sick. Look at all that room you got inside of there. Huge storage up in there. That's gonna be a plus because I'm gonna be able to drop that floor all the way to the bottom and it's gonna leave a lot of room for his batteries and stuff to go in there. The negative is that all the foam I took out of there was pretty much crap. It was not reusable. I mean, look at this trash can. This trash can was completely empty when I started and the best part about it is you get to play Tetris and you get to fit all these big blocks and chunks of foam inside of your trash can and hope that it'll close. But you can see how this foam is. I mean, it's too deep. This is like five inch thick. It would not fit up underneath those ribs. If I try to cut it through the middle, it's just not gonna work. And these are the pieces I really wanted to get right here. These are the big ones that sit on the bottom of the floor. They're not waterlogged at all and it would be fine except they cut them in these little short strips. That's not gonna work either. There was literally three pieces in there this size. There's nothing I can use these for. So all this is trash. Tomorrow I'm on my way home from work. I'm gonna pick up a sheet of inch and a half closed cell foam. I'm basically gonna line it up underneath this floor in between these ribs right here and make sure this thing is packed in there as tight as possible. Then I'm gonna install this floor. I already got these side gunnels finished up. I'm gonna install the side panels on top of that. Then I have to make a piece for this. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this up tonight. That way I can bring this home tomorrow. I'm gonna bring a piece to finish this off. I am gonna wrap this live well with the one inch closed cell phone that I have over there because that's the way I set this thing up. And then I'm gonna take this electrical panel hatch that I have right here. I'm gonna take this to work tomorrow. I'm gonna build a pan that's gonna sit inside of there. It's gonna be removable and it's gonna house his switch panel and his fuse block. I'm gonna build that, I'm gonna bring it home. That way I can finish up the electrical panel hatch. Then the only thing I'm gonna have left to do is finish up this back deck area right here behind the back bench to the transom. Now he was talking about putting his motor on a jack plate and that's cool because it's gonna get that thing out of the way. It's gonna allow me to have all this room to build a hatch. But I'm in a time crunch and I can't really make this thing too intricate because I only have tomorrow and a little bit of time on Friday to finish this thing up. It's Wednesday about 12.30 and I'm getting tired. So I'm gonna take these measurements that I need. Tomorrow, I'm gonna build as much stuff as I can at the shop to bring home me to try to get this thing as far along as I can. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think about what we're doing. This thing's gonna be sick. I've still got a little bit of work to do on it and I'm gonna wrap this thing up as fast as possible. I'll see you guys next time. Let's get back to work. What are you guys still doing here? The video's over. Well, it was over, but my boy Bucky hit me up and he's so close to getting a thousand subscribers. I know I've mentioned him before. He's got a YouTube channel called Tri Waves. I've known this dude for 20 years. 
He lives right down the street. I'm doing a lot of fishing with him coming up this summer. And I would appreciate if you guys just go subscribe to his channel. Just help a brother out. Let's just help him get a thousand subscribers. I ain't going to ask you to do nothing else for him. All right. I'll see you guys next time. For real. This is it. Let's get back to work.